Dr. Chen. I'm the one of the organizers for San Francisco Big Analytics. So um, as you know that we organizing uh, events like this to talk about uh, data infrastructures, data frameworks, process data processing, you know, uh, machine learning infrastructures, uh, you know, machine learning algorithms, and anything related to the whole end-to-end -end pipelines of the data. So today we have, we never done this before, but today we have a speaker all the way from China <laughs> in Beijing to give, you know, his perspective about how the data, you know, data world, whether it's the data ops or data infrastructures and what is involved. And this is a kind of totally uh, a new perspective. We never have done this before. Uh, uh, we go or we, uh, you know, depends on who's the uh, calling is uh, so um, <clears throat> he was a, a veteran in the data world and he had been, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, three years ago when we met, he's the CEO of the company in charge of the data. So today he have his own startup. He's a, a Apache uh, open source uh, members and, uh, and, you know, some have contributed in several uh, Apache projects. So with that, I'll turn to Wei to give a talk about the data of the new team. Take away. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, so thank you, Chancellor. And uh, thank you for the invitation for, to share the experience and uh, some knowledge uh, for new trans data ops uh, from China perspective. Uh, I'm uh, Wei Guo and uh, I used to work at uh, IBM and uh, Teradata and also work as uh, in CICC, Wanda and uh, Ledubo. And uh, uh, my last job is the CTO of Analysis. And now I am the uh, Apache Software Foundation member and uh, also the PMC of a Dolphin Scheduler, the mentor of Apache C-Tunnel. And also I, I have uh, some other, uh, like a, a TGO board member, uh, that's the InfoQ Global uh, CTO community. And today uh, I want to introduce some new trends of uh, data ops, uh, especially in, in China. I, I, I found many new interesting news and uh, use of uh, data ops. And uh, first, I want to let you know what is data ops. Uh, actually, you know, now we have uh, many, many, many uh, kinds of uh, data and we have uh, many uh, data sources like uh, Hadoop, Oracle, MongoDB, ClickHouse. But actually, uh, our consumer uh, is not only the boss, but also sometimes the data scientist and also the uh, product managers and also sometimes the operations guys. They just want a data set they want to use. And uh, that's the target of the data. And uh, there is a huge job from, uh, uh, from the source data to your target data. If you uh, there's a, there are many, many functions you have to do. For example, the extraction, transformation, load, archive, and also you can do some validation at data governance or data catalog, and also the data security. That is the data ops platform. Uh, and uh, I, I see it's uh, more and more popular in US, but uh, it's also more and more popular in China. So. The data ops is to do something from the source data to the target data easily. And uh, you, have, you will have a high performance and uh, very conven convenient uh, tools to do this kind of things. Uh, we can see uh, there's an architecture on the right side. Uh, this is the architecture of a big data platform uh, in many enterprise. Uh, you have uh, your own database or you have your SaaS you can uh, extract the data from the database in the source uh, to your data warehouse. And also now we have our uh, Kafka or uh, Parsa to do some, um, to collect the data from your web page, your APP, your IoT devices, and uh, then you can load your data to, to your data stream or your data lake. So uh, many enterprise have their own data warehouse uh, such as uh, uh, Cloud or Hadoop, or use data warehouse from uh, Greenplum or Teradata. And also some uh, uh, enterprise use uh, uh, cloud-based data warehouse, um, Amazon, Azure, or Google Cloud. And uh, uh, there's uh, also another uh, part 
of the uh, data platform uh, called the data stream. We use a, a Storm or Flink or Spark Streaming uh, or AWS Kinesis or Tizen Oceanos to uh, do the data data stream from from uh, Kafka to the OLAP part. And also we use Hudi or Spark to do the data lake. And uh, uh, beyond the state warehouse, data stream and data lake, there's a layer called OLAP layer. OLAP layer to, is to support people uh, to do the ad hoc query very fast, such as uh, Kitten or Presto, uh, like a Starburst Presto. Uh, I think it's called a TrinoDB now. And also uh, Clearhouse and Drilled and Impala to, to do the OLAP engine to, to, to let people know uh, the query very fast. And also we have a BI tools like uh, Cognos, a BO, Tableau, uh, Click, and eChart to, to do the BI tools. And uh, we also have uh, uh, the data scientist platform like uh, uh, Jupyter, Array, or other, uh, uh, other data scientist platform. And uh, we can see there is another, uh, uh, many, many part of uh, database and, uh, and the data platform. How to do the data from one part to the other? And this is what we call the data ops. And now the trends is the cloud native uh, data ops platform. Uh, from, uh, for the data ops platform, there will be four parts. Uh, for example, the first is uh, data synchronize. Uh, that means uh, you have to synchronize uh, from one part to the other. Uh, I know there's a company called uh, Five Train in, in US, and uh, now it's uh, very popular in China. We call it uh, there's uh, Apache C Tunnel. This uh, Apache uh, projects which do the like the same thing of uh, Five Train from uh, uh, in China, and also. Uh, for the data transform, that means uh, you 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 do the data mapping and uh, transform and deployment. Uh, there's a company called a DBT in US, and also some part of uh, C Tunnel can do do the, do that the same thing. And uh, uh, there's will be another uh, uh, scheduler called Apache uh, uh, Apache Airflow to do the uh, the scheduler from. Um, to do the uh, to to do the job the dependency or trigger the new job and monitor the whole jobs and uh, I I know Apache Airflow is uh, very popular in the U.S. Uh, but uh, Apache Docker Scheduler is the most uh, popular tools in China because it's uh, it can support many 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 uh, new jobs and. Uh, uh, also, there will be a metadata management for data ops for to control the data quality, to 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 ensure the data security and key analysis, and uh, to do some uh, association of metadata. And uh, here, uh, Apache Dolphin Scheduler uh, will support some uh, some part of uh, the functions like uh, data quality. So the trends of the data ops now is uh, to do the cloud native. That means you you can you can use the uh, the tools not only as a part of your premise on premise deployment, but but also you can use uh, on the cloud. Not only one cloud, you can use it as a multiple cloud, uh, such as you can use it uh, on KBS or you can use it on AWS and also uh, uh, crossing to the Azure uh, or to the Google Cloud, because many people not only have the people and have the data in Amazon, but also have the data from Amazon and the Google Cloud and Azure. So uh, I think of the, the trends of the data ops, that means uh, you, you, you have to, you, you, that means uh, the trends of the data ops is uh, to support the cloud native is, uh, is the trends. And uh, today I, I want to share some, uh, some use case and experience in China, especially in big internet company, how to use uh, the, the the three three part three tools for the data ops that that is uh, Clickhouse, Citano, and uh, Dolphin Scheduler. Uh, this is also this is the Apache version, so you can use it free. Uh, this is an example uh, for uh, a typical example for uh, internet company in China. Uh, this from this is case from uh, VIP.com. You can see. 
this is a data uh, warehouse and data lake layer. They use a Hadoop and a Spark and uh, a log show as their, their batch data warehouse. And uh, also they have a real time streaming on Flink, Kafka and Kudu. And also they have uh, Apache Kudu as their data lake. And for ad hoc OLAP engine, they have a clear house for ad hoc query. And uh, for OLAP, OLAP query, they have their Presto and uh, Killingers for their OLAP, OLAP query. And uh, beyond this, they build their them their 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 their, uh, uh, their SQL data service and uh, no SQL self service. That's uh, that's tools they build themselves. And also, they have many many data applications like a reporting service or API service and as a platform. So this is a typical uh, data architecture in China and uh, in big uh, big internet companies. And uh, so first I can introduce the Clearhouse. Uh, Clearhouse is a high performance OLAP engine and it's Apache license open source. So you can just try freely for, for, for the open source project. It's very popular in China uh, because uh, there are more than uh, 6,000 users uh, to use Clearhouse as their ad hoc query platform or their user, uh, ver uh, user data warehouse. Uh, such as eBay, I know I know eBay uses Clearhouse as their uh, user user data warehouse, and Tencent or TikTok or Sina or Dangdang or other bank in China. So it's many many or Jingdong or the many many uh, users in China to use Clearhouse Air uh, to to support their ad hoc query. Ad hoc query means you can just uh, input your SQL and then you can get your result in one or two seconds, no matter how big the data is. So it's very hard, but uh, uh, Clearhouse can do, uh, can do it very, very, uh, very quickly. And it only can support one white table uh, very quickly. It cannot support join. So, so uh, it's different from a drill, I think, but it's, it, it, it does very good in one table one white table uh, select and one white table uh, group by something like that. Uh, here is an example uh, from from Tayson Music in China. Uh, Tayson Music uh, in, uh, use Clearhouse as its a real time data warehouse. Uh, they met their issue because there are many many requirements for data reports, and then they will be a bottleneck for the data department a department because. Uh, uh, many guys to do the ETL things, many guys to do the SQL things, but their data scientist or their uh, product manager is not satisfied because uh, they have many, many requirements. So they want to uh, to use the SQL to query the detailed data at once and to see the, the result at once. So they build their real-time interactive data warehouse using ClickHouse. Uh, which the architecture is like this. They have their logs and they have their logs uh, uh, collect to the Kafka. And then they use Flink as their uh, ETL things from, uh, from Kafka to the ClickHouse. And because ClickHouse is not good at a join, so they join, uh, join the user profiling in, in, in their ETL, ETL jobs. They use Flink to, to do, do these kind of things. And then they use the Clearhouse ad, as their main ad hoc query engine for their uh, final users. Uh, for example, the product manager, the, the, the data analyst, and the, the other people. They, they, they just use a SQL or use the uh, BI report tools to directly to query the details of the user behaviors and the user profilings. And also, they have their uh, another another way to do the ETL. The ETL one way to uh, to import the data to the uh, to load the data to the ClickHouse. Another uh, way is the ETL to generate the data file, which can just uh, load to the Hadoop for the uh, huge data storage. And uh, they use the ClickHouse to store one year uh, one year's data and uh, the other. Uh, part it will be stored in Hadoop because it's uh, cheaper. 
So this they use the same uh, ETL code for batch and uh, streaming, and uh, they just uh, do the offline HDFS for huge data storage, and they just uh, they can uh, do the real time analytics because uh, the uh, use of Flink. This uh, Flink is a, a data stream, uh, a data stream engine, and uh, they can load to the ClickHouse just in a few seconds. And uh, the product manager and data analyst can query the in, uh, query the uh, the detailed data just in one or two seconds. So that's a typical use of uh, uh, ClickHouse. And also for Sina, Sina, uh, they have their their data. They have a uh, 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 30 billion records per day, and uh, they have uh, about uh, 8 million queries per day, so it's very large. And they, they want their query time will be less than one second. So, so this, uh, uh, there's a large amount of uh, queries per day. Uh, they just uh, use ClearHouse to, 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 uh, to support this kind of thing. Uh, it has many, many other uh, data engines, and uh, now and then ClearHouse can support that. Uh, they just uh, uh, use the Kafka to collect the data, and uh, they do the ETL uh, with uh, Spark streaming from one Kafka to another Kafka to, to join the table into a one wide table to ClickHouse. And uh, then the ClickHouse can support Grafana and uh, Superset and the Redash. And also there is another uh, ad hoc a SQL query can can support that. So um, they do the real time loading, and uh, people can query the detailed data and get the result less than one seconds to 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 do the uh, to to get your result. And uh, they use much less server res uh, resource. Uh, they just uh, uh, before they use about 80, uh, 80 servers of a Hadoop. Now they only have uh, sixteen servers of ClickHouse to solve the to solve the, the same same question uh, same same issue for the uh, for the queries and uh, they said they they they, they, uh, they are easy for ETL because they uh, we did not know we did not need to build many many ETL program you just uh, pro just ETL the detailed data load the detailed data to ClickHouse and then they handle the whole thing you can query uh, complex SQL, then the, the, you will get the result in one second. Uh, so there's another case of uh, Himalaya. Himalaya is an uh, app uh, to do a podcast in China. Uh, and they have uh, three typical ways to use ClickHouse for enterprise. Uh, the first is the user behavior uh, analysis. They call the magic mirror. And the, the second is uh, user trade analysis. That means uh, user profiling analysis. Uh, and also they do the mo monitoring and for the server, uh, server logs. So this is a typical architect for, for ClearHouse, I think. Uh, they have their own data warehouse and they do the batch load to join into a white table to the ClearHouse. And the other way is from the Kafka and they do the Spark streaming from from user uh, from the user tracking events or system logs to to Spark streaming, load them to the ClickHouse and support a SQL query. And uh, also another case for Tweetotl, that's an NTT in Nasdaq, uh, use ClickHouse. They have many 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 uh, data per day. They have uh, about one billion records per day. And uh, they have uh, uh, 200,000 queries per day. And now they have uh, 18 queries less than one second. They just use a 100 server uh, to support this. You can see the, they have a Kafka and also they have a Flink and load them to the uh, two cluster of a Cliff House. And uh, also because Cliff House cannot support join, they use a Presto to 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 uh, to finish the function of a join, they load the the, uh, the data to the HDFS, and then they use Presto to to have the join join things. So you can see there's many 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 people you use uh, ClickHouse like a, a real time data warehouse, and uh, uh, from a, a Kafka or database uh, from a uh, to use a Flink or Spark streaming to the ClickHouse 
and then you can use the BI tools or data scientist platform uh, to query the detailed data. Now, for the data ops, there's another uh, big part for for the uh, for the data ops part, uh, which called uh, uh, Apache Dolphin Scheduler. Uh, it's very easy to use to, of uh, of uh, uh, for the job scheduler. I know there's many data scientists and many data analysts uh, uh, analysts in, in online, uh, and uh, we do not know how to program the the job or how to use the job, but we. Uh, actually, we use the query, we use SQL, and we want our uh, our data mining or AI algorithm run 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 every day. Uh, how to uh, schedule a very good scheduler? I think uh, Apache Dolphin scheduler is uh, is one one of the uh, those tools. Uh, Apache Dolphin scheduler is a high performance and easy and a stable data jobs to get scheduler. It's also Apache license open source, so you can use and you, you can contribute the code back to the Apache uh, uh, community. And the uh, Dolphin scheduler, uh, we call it, uh, is a uh, uh, distributed and easy to extend visual workflow scheduler platform. It's famous for its uh, a powerful DAG visual interface. Uh, that means you can uh, you can click and drag and drop the the whole job. And no need to program. You just uh, use your uh, your mouse your mouse to to finish all the things. And uh, it has high performance to solve complex tasks in data pipeline. And uh, you can deal with uh, various types of data source. And now we in China we, we use this AI workflow, uh, data mining workflow, and the data pipeline data workflow. And uh, uh, some some advantage for this uh, open source project, uh, it uh, has a high reliability because it's a decentralized uh, multi worker and a multi uh, master, uh, masters. So it can support across many, many clouds. As for example, you can use some part of uh, AWS and some part of uh, Google Cloud. It, it can support the, the job across the cloud. And also, it's simple and easy. Uh, you just uh, drag and drop to do, to do the whole things. You can define your workflow. No need to, to know Java, Python, or other, other, uh, other language. Uh, and uh, it's easy to, to deploy. And uh, you support uh, many uses uh, scenarios. For for example, you can support a uh, pause and resume your your operations, your, your operations, and uh, support multi tenant and uh, support many task types uh, like a Spark shell and the Hive, and also it has a high scalability, uh, support many uh, uh, many customer types, and uh, you the scheduling capacity grows lining with the cluster nodes. It uh, it has some some features like uh, real real DAG jobs, high availability, multitask, and uh, uh, support the various dependency types like a self-independent task or task dependency over workflow or you know, workflow dependency a uh, 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 workflow depend on another workflow. So it's uh, support many uh, dependency types. And the many uh, alert log mechanism, and uh, you can refresh the historical data. So it's a very easy tools to use. Uh, it it is open source in 2018, and uh, it be uh, the Apache top level project in the last year. Uh, there's many users in in in, in China. Uh, some of them we we know. For example, IBM, uh, Lenovo. Uh, Verma in China, Nokia in China, Nokia in China, and also a lot of uh, internet company use use it in China. Uh, so I think I can share some uh, architect of uh, Apache Dolphin Scheduler. Uh, it's a multi master and a multi worker uh, architecture. So it it, uh, it 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 will work well uh, even if some master or some worker failed. And, and it's very stable. So for I think it's a very good a good architecture. And also it's a support uh, Flink, uh, Spark, and many many other uh, other language or other uh, other uh, data jobs. 
And uh, here is uh, the realize, uh, uh, realization of uh, this uh, data ops tools. You can just uh, uh, drag and drop. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you can drag a shell and drag a spark. And then you can, uh, the program, you can just uh, load the program or load the job to, to this um, tools. And then this tool can deploy the, the Spark or the MapReduce or the Hive cycle to the right place. You need to know where is the server. You need to log on the server. And uh, uh, it also support what we call the sub process. That means you just like the workflow as a, as a function. You can you reuse the sub process in other, uh, other places and uh, you can uh, give it uh, a different parameter, then you, the, 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 the function, the subprocess will run at different parameter again and again. So I think it's a very useful for, uh, for AI, AI people or data mining people. And uh, uh, here is the monitor logs. You, you not only can see the, 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 uh, the whole process in the web, web page, and also Dolphin Scheduler can collect the logs from Hadoop, from Spark. Then you need to log on the Hadoop server or a Spark server. You, you, you only uh, need to log on the web page of Dolphin Scheduler. You can view the logs of the, what happened to the servers from this uh, uh, Dolphin Scheduler tool. And also they have uh, many, many tasks. Uh, for example, condition task. That, that says uh, if then, and also it support switch task uh, you that means you if you the parameter is the different or the result of the workflow is different it can go the different way when the uh, from the different result and also dolphin scheduler support kvis uh, that's very important because i think uh, uh, the cloud native is a, the, is a trend and uh, uh, kvis will uh, will will be the next uh, next uh, next round so uh, so Dolphin Scheduler support that. Uh, and uh, there's a, also, if you are a programmer, uh, this is very easily to, uh, to, to program your own, your own uh, product, your own process, because there, there's a, a SPI, many SPI to support, to, 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 to develop more functions of yourself. Uh, and uh, here is uh, some. Uh, the, here is one use case for for China Unicom, and they choose uh, uh, Dolphin Scheduler to chose over uh, six hundred thousand jobs in its uh, big data platform uh, because uh, it's uh, easy to use and uh, uh, it's no single point failure, and uh, also the performance is very good and. Uh, uh, user is user friendly and uh, support sub job and job template. It's very convenient for users, especially uh, it's not big data developers, but only uh, the, uh, the, uh, the data analyst or your data scientist. They are not uh, big data developers, but you, but it can be very easy to use. And uh, uh, also, uh, there is support support uh, uh, task. Uh, they support the parameter from task to task or task to workflow, and uh, other scheduler like uh, uh, Airflow or other other uh, other uh, workflow uh, scheduler cannot support that. Uh, so, so this is a case for uh, uh, Dolphin scheduler. I think it's. Um, very popular in China, and I, I want to share you with this uh, tools. And uh, also, there's another tools called uh, uh, C Tunnel. The C Tunnel do the things to synchronize and uh, transform the data from one part to the other part. You also do not need the, the Spark, or you do not need to know the, the, the language of Flink. You just uh, use the tech language to, to do the things very soon. So Apache Citano is a high performance distributed massive data integration platform. It, it is also an Apache license open source project and uh, it entered Apache, uh, Apache incubator just uh, last year. 
and uh, now many people in in China use this. Uh, and uh, also like a uh, Clickhouse City or Alexei, uh, like, like this uh, uh, Apache project. And uh, you can see uh, it has its own website and uh, tweets. Uh, and uh, it has uh, many new features. For example, it's a uh, high performance and uh, it's a distributed uh, a platform and it's very easy to use. I can show you everyone can learn to transform data or synchronize data in about five minutes. <laughs> and uh, it has many uh, plugins and uh, it's based on Spark and uh, Flink. But uh, you need, didn't you needn't to know how to program with Spark or Flink. And uh, it uh, less it uh, you you need less coding, uh, almost zero coding uh, in this uh, uh, in this projects, uh, there's many uh, use cases in, in China, as like uh, TikTok, uh, Tencent, Blibli, and uh, China Mobile, and, uh, Weibo, and uh, something like that. Uh, it what what does this project do is just a support from data source and to target to synchronize and transform the data from input to the output. You can see it support many many input like. Uh, uh, HDFS, Elasticsearch, S3 in AWS, uh, MySQL, MongoDB, Kudu, and uh, something like that. And also it uh, support many outputs like uh, ClickHouse, Elasticsearch, uh, Hive, MongoDB. And that means you can uh, do, and uh, it has many filters. Filters means uh, transform. You can just uh, convert from, from uh, from your, uh, for example, from a tag, from a task to a data type, date type, and uh, from, a, for example, lowercase or uh, truncate or uppercase, and uh, uh, you can do the transform from input to output, and it supports many input to many uh, output. So here is an example. So so you can see it's very easy to use this kind of tools. You just um, uh, use the environment, and uh, you can you can use a tiger source uh, from MySQL. Then you can use the transform for the filter. You can do the uppercase up, up or lowercase, and then you can sync from uh, MySQL to Elasticsearch. You needn't to to program with uh, uh, Spark or 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 Flink. Flink. You just uh, do the the, the tag language. Then you can. Uh, you can sync from one kind of data to the other. Uh, here is uh, a, 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 we have the example on the website. Uh, you can you can try the demo and uh, on, on the website. So here is a summary uh, summarize from from my talk. Uh, I just uh, introduced the whole data ops example in China, and uh, I introduced the three data ops uh, tools in China. Uh, which one is uh, ClickHouse? You can visit the website of clickhouse.com. And uh, also, I introduced uh, the Dolphin Scheduler. Uh, the website is dolphinscheduler.apache.org. And uh, also, uh, I introduced uh, Ctunnel. It's a high performance uh, distributed massive data integration platform. Uh, you can visit the website in, in ctunnel.apache.org. And uh, if you, you are uh, interested in my talk or, or you want to see, uh, to contact with me, you can, you, you can uh, use my LinkedIn. Uh, my LinkedIn is WilliamK2000. And, uh, or you can send email to me. My email is uh, Huawei at Apache.org. And so that's, uh, that's all of my talk. And uh, uh, here, do you have some questions? And uh, I can. I can answer it for the question, and uh, I like to to to, to discuss with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, William. Uh, sure, we have a question. I, I have a few questions myself, but before I get to mine, I want to, uh, you know, ask the question for the audience that have asked. Uh, actually, it's a uh, two question. One come from Brazil, the other one coming from Australia. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, That's first great. one is how, how to integrate the Dolphin scheduler with the clouds, like uh, instantiate on AWS Lambda or mm -hmm. EMR cluster? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, 
now we just uh, support Spark, Hadoop, and the other Apache uh, Apache uh, projects. And uh, in this year, we will support AWS and uh, Google Cloud. Uh, and uh, I think some of the Alibaba, but uh, uh, now we just uh, so, uh, we we have a plan to support AWS Lambda and the EMR cluster in this year. Uh, this is on, on our plan. <laughs> I know many people use AWS, uh, not, not only uh, the Spark or Hadoop. Uh, we, we will support that in, in this year. <laughs> so, yeah. but, it, but your answer is, is that you will support both, essentially? Yeah, yeah, support those in, in this year. We have uh, our roadmap to, to support uh, the cloud, not only AWS, but uh, the Google Cloud. Uh, not only Lambda, but uh, uh, also other uh, EMR and other uh, other uh, uh, other functions on, on AWS. Cool. Uh, the second question coming from Australia from KK, and they said, uh, "Clubhouse is very popular in China due to reuse of existing architecture, ETL, scheduler, data sharing. And Clubhouse in the lake house, like a Databricks lake house, has similar framework and architecture. Hmm. Is that yeah. fast?" And integrated, or I'm not quite sure of the question. I understand the fully understand the question. Is that fast and integrated by automated migration to convert Clubhouse to Latehouse by using the same people, process, and technology? Mm. Uh, yeah. First, I think Clubhouse is uh, is not a Latehouse in my point of view uh, because it's only support one wide wide table. Uh, I think the join the the operator join performance is not very very good in ClickHouse, so I think it's only like a, um, only like you can use it as a, a OLAP engine. It's not a, a ClickHouse engine. Uh, I think ClickHouse is uh, Hoodie or or Delta Lake or or Iceberg is is better, uh, or use uh, use uh, Google Cloud or AWS Cloud is is better. Uh, but if you have your OLAP uh, ad hoc query, uh, or you have want to build your own uh, interactive uh, uh, query engine or query interface, a Clickhouse is a good choice. So it's not Lakehouse, I think. So you can load the data from the data lake to the Clickhouse. Uh, it's it cannot replace with your uh, your, uh, your your data lake in my point of view. <laughs> I think yeah. I think you said it just the architecture like the architecture are similar. So I think the second part of the question is really is there is an easy by the same people essentially assuming KK if you want to clarify you can unmute yourself and then clarify. But uh, it's, I assume that is basically like for example people Spark developers they can write ETL jobs transfer the files. Uh, from, you know, uh, yeah, to, uh, yeah. It it uh, I think is uh, is fast to integrate uh, the the data. Uh, with the same group of uh, people, and uh, if you cannot uh, to integrate the, the the data, you can use the C tunnel to load the data to to the Clearhouse. Uh, then it it will be easy to to use the Clearhouse with the C tunnel, or you can load the data use GDBC to insert the data to the Clearhouse. Uh, it's a, it's a slower, but uh, it it can works. And you, you, you want to load the data fast, you can use the C tunnel to load the data. Uh, I think uh, it, it can be finished with the same people, same group, because Clickhouse uses the SQL language. Uh, it's, it's not a NoSQL language. So everybody know how to use the SQL. So I think it's easy <laughs> for you to use. <laughs> for, for Clickhouse, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, for Clickhouse, um, the where is the, uh, like for example, the Clickhouse in the cloud, supposing AWS. So is the software <laughs> resize on S3 or somewhere else? Uh, there's a uh, there's a project uh, called the Clickhouse on S3. Uh, I think it supports S3, but uh, my suggestion is uh, you just uh, use Clickhouse uh, in in AWS and you acquire not S3 but the the, we call the lo lo local or, or cloud cloud disk uh, on, on the one? yeah yeah it's not on the S3 I think is it, it uh, support S3 uh, it's not very well I think it's not very good to use but uh, it can it it works 
but uh, I think uh, if you want uh, higher performance, you have to have your own uh, cloud disk, not only not, not, not to use the S3 for ClickHouse. And uh, I think the, uh, the company of uh, ClickHouse, they will, uh, they will offer the uh, ClickHouse, ClickHouse cloud service, but you have to buy it. <laughs> if you want to the open source, open source version, uh, I suggest you, you use the uh, cloud disk, not S3. <laughs> okay, so the yes. Problems. Okay. So why the, the C tunnel writing that faster than the GDBC? Because are they literally just using Spark or writing do the same jobs then? Uh, because C tunnel not when the sync uh, the sync part of C tunnel is not to use uh, GDBC, it uh, just uh, write the the database file directly in right. in the click house. So it's uh, faster. It's not used the GDBC, but uh, it do the it, it do do the the, the the what we call the bulk load, bulk load part. So okay. Okay. so yeah, bulk load part. So so it's faster. If you want to use the faster, you can use the Ctunnel to 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 load the data to to the ClickHouse. Okay. Since we're talking about uh, the ClickHouse, I'm asking you a question, which is the flip side you asked me earlier before the meeting. Why the uh, the China using ClipHouse instead of uh, Druid or some other equivalent? Uh, actually, uh, you know, Druid cannot uh, support you for the detailed uh, data query, and the ClickHouse can do the detailed uh, data query as the same performance, and uh, you can got the exactly number of the the detail uh, query. You know, drilled sometimes you, you cannot the, the accurate number of the the, the, the query because drilled, uh, I think drilled some of, of the drilled uh, cannot offer the exactly number from the detail detail uh, data. A uh, click house you can use the use them just the the the, the detail. Uh, I think the detailed data. <laughs> I think that the the main point is uh, accurate or not accurate. I think is very important for for our data scientists and data analysts. So I think that's why ClickHouse is so popular <laughs> in China. I see. So uh, I, I I remember these uh, OLAP databases that has the concept of rollup. So you build that these uh, you have this a uh, timeline in uh, like a timestamp as uh, your. Uh, your, your time and then you build up these you know uh, aggregations gradually mm -hmm. up to the next level and eventually you get a total numbers and you can drill down it's clickhouse has mm -hmm. type of things so you're you had to de predefine these your cube in a sense and then the roll nope. up. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so so that's why clickhouse is uh, powerful clickhouse will not need no need to build your uh, your dimensions or your uh, in index first you just uh, uh, throw the detailed data to the click house, and then you can use SQL to use uh, select a group by, and then it can calculate very fast. So you need to build your cube, your your OLAP first. Uh, so that's uh, one point for one good point for click house. And the other, if you want to uh, to do it more faster, click house has a function called uh, projection. A projection function is just just like a, a, a materialized wheel, but it's more uh, powerful. It it can you you can uh, you can uh, let the projection function to know which index or which dimension you 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 often use, and then ClickHouse will do some uh, index when you insert the data, the data. Then you use the same. SQL like a select uh, something from and uh, group by other other, other dimension and uh, it will be more faster than ClickHouse if you did not you know the uh, did not use the projection. So I think uh, this two function is uh, more powerful. You need to build your 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 dimension first. You just use uh, ad hoc query. You select anything and uh, group by anything you want. <laughs> so, so I think that's why ClickHouse is very popular in China. <laughs> well, it's not a purely uh, OLAP database system. So, uh, so because you're built uh, this a flat table and then just do any 
ad hoc queries. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, one, one more question related to this. Uh, so on your diagrams, you built this OLAP database like a clubhouse, and then it seems like you can also using the visualization tools, a superset, click, you know, hmm. other, other tools directly query the clubhouse. Uh, have you, uh, <clears throat> you have that graph just right there. <laughs> yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. Um, oh, well, this is the one example, yeah. So, uh, have you, uh, is China or any other, uh, you, the company you've seen have using Dremels or as another, the Dremels kind of uh, give you the C where, you know, SQL understanding very quick data loading directly from S3 and or other cloud. And then mm -hmm. you can visualize there directly. Uh, it's the super mm -hmm. fast using Apache Arrow to communicating. So have mm -hmm. you done that? Uh, not, 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 not very popular in China now, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, because, you know, S3 is not very popular in China. Uh, China, we use, uh, Ali, Ali cloud and, uh, Tayson cloud. <laughs> so S3 is not very popular and the uh, dream oh. is not support that. So it's not very popular in China, <laughs> but, but I think if, if, if it can support, uh, Alibaba or, or other cloud, I think it will be popular in China. It, it's very, I think it's, um, Apache Arrow and uh, Dream is a very good project. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Switch gear to the, uh, the other project that you have the Dolphin. I think you're the, one of the PMC for that project. So the, the yeah. Dolphin scheduler, uh, from what do you describe? It sounds like, a this is like a visual editing uh, workflow. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I happened to work on a startup uh, so many years ago as an awesome <laughs> visual workflow. Uh, yeah. uh, you can you can literally drag an uh, icon and connect to a Hadoop job and run it and a machine learning job to run it. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, I'm sure this is easy for a data analyst or a business analyst to do. But what about the, the people who the programmers? Actually, I know this is what is emphasizing not for mm -hmm. not much code, but many times yeah. when we you know we use the Airflow. Many times yeah. you use Airflow <laughs> is because we have some tasks we have to do a loop and eventually with a two mm -hmm. lines of code we generate mm -hmm. uh, maybe 20, 30 uh, these uh, parallel tasks, and uh, if you do manually draft them, that would be hard, right? So, uh, yep. so is the target to the kind of a high end, you know, like a, a how to put non programmers uh, in per se, or I'm trying to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, 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 a very good question because uh, 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 Dolphin Scheduler, uh, in the new version of uh, Dolphin Scheduler, which released the last, uh, last year, we not only support drag, uh, drag and drag, but also we support two other ways. One way we call it is a workflow as code. <laughs> you, you just uh, use a Python. <laughs> you, can, you can use Python to define your DAG uh, workflow. And uh, the other we call the workflow as a spreadsheet. <laughs> that means you, you just use uh, just like a, a, a Excel to define the trigger and the dependency. And then we can generate the DAG from your spreadsheet. <laughs> so, uh, for programmers, you can use a Python uh, to define the DAG, uh, DAG workflow. And for other people do not want to use Python, you can use uh, your spreadsheet to define the, the, the DAG. <laughs> That's a very good question. And I know, noticed that many people, uh, not all, all the people like the drag and the drag. And uh, some people like uh, use uh, the, 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 the programming and uh, some people like the spreadsheet then we support spreadsheet and, and uh, programming <laughs> i guess i guess the uh dolphin scheduler the primary target user is the business and analyst data scientist whoever yeah. who don't who don't who prefer don't to know want to know how to programming uh, a dag uh, and they basically yeah. say well, you know, i i know python but i don't want to learn that scheduler part of the dag uh, but yes. but you're saying you're saying basically saying well you don't if you are a programmer later on you could use a, a Python to do it right yeah yes yes <laughs> okay okay I think I, I I got that part uh uh any I, I'm asking a lot of questions uh, so the, the audience is so if somebody else has uh, has questions either you post it in the chat or unmute yourself so because we don't have a lot of people. So you can just unmute yourself and ask the question directly.
So we a lot of uh, we have a lot of Asian Pacific audience. I guess I see people from Singapore as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very good meetup. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I, I know the, uh, uh, you know, even nobody asked ask a question, let me just uh, ask some random questions. Uh, I noticed here on the table format and uh, you particular uh, uh, listed the hoodie, uh, which is the, mm -hmm. the table format coming from Hadoop. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. from YouTube, uh, Uber, uh, uh, the developer mm -hmm. of Uber. Uh, mm -hmm. What about the iceberg uh, and uh, Delta Lake? Uh, you guys that didn't even, you know, you have this beta lake, but it's not not uh, data breaks a delta lake. Those are the the other mm -hmm. two competing uh, formats. Mm -hmm. uh, I think now um, hoodie is more popular than Asper. Um I, I don't know why, because uh, I think they're similar. And uh, uh, now uh, in China, uh, few people use data lake. Now, because I think uh, they have a large cluster of uh, Hadoop, a large of uh, cluster of uh, Teradata and, and, and or, or other, uh, other open source project. But I think Hudi or Asperg will, will, will de develop very fast. But uh, in now, now we did not, have, uh, did, not, did not see the trends of whether Hoodie or Asperg or Delta Lake. I think Delta Lake is not popular because Delta Lake is, uh, the function is limited. Uh, the Delta Lake is limited so for, for the function. So for the, for the uh, so I think the Delta Lake is not popular because the limitation of uh, the open source version of uh, 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 Delta Lake. Uh, I think if, uh, if uh, uh, if uh, Databricks uh, open source more functions for Data Lake, I think it will be popular. But for now, I think uh, Asperg or Hoodie will be popular. I think uh, mm, that will be popular in China. That that's a trend. <laughs> I think uh, I think uh, Hoodie Hoodie is a use uh, user. Of course, uh, Uber used them, and there is a many other company use them. Uh, but uh, yeah. Asperg are also very popular in the Silicon Valley. And besides Netflix, uh, you've got uh, I think uh, the uh, Adobe or uh, Apple and a, a few other companies are actually using uh, them as well. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I don't know whether which one will be better, <laughs> but also better, <laughs> also good. <laughs> okay, one more question on the the streaming framework. I know the Alibaba, you know, uh, has put a lot of effort on Flink um, because they purchased the company mm -hmm. behind them. Uh, mm -hmm. But in China, uh, what use do you see the in terms of uh, streaming framework? Do you prefer mm -hmm. mostly using Flink or mostly in Spark streaming? Mm, now I think uh, Flink is more and more popular because uh, Flink. Uh, has many good features. For, for example, Flink has its own CDC. That means uh, you can synchronize people, synchronize uh, data uh, from one to the other. And uh, many, many new functions developed by Alibaba on Flink. And the Spark streaming, I think the, the function is limited. So um, now Flink is uh, more popular than uh, Spark streaming in China now. I think Flink is very popular in China. Yeah. So in one of the use cases, I think it's a ten cents. You said is a uh, the using uh, one same code for batch and streaming. I think that's a ten cents, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this uh, for batch and streaming, you're using the same ETL code. So that means that the the, the ETL code for the batch mode is also written in Flink. Yes, they just uh, use uh, Flink. Uh, use Flink. La, la, use the. Uh, they use Flink SQL to do the ETL things, and uh, uh, they just use Hadoop as uh, as a, 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 a data storage. Uh, but uh, they they use uh, Clearhouse as their main. Uh, they call the real time data warehouse. But I think it's because their 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 data is data format is simple. So they use a clearhouse as a data warehouse. 
uh, yeah, uh, and I, you, you, I think you're right. Yeah, but but in in many cases, of when you do streamings, uh, I mean, you have a very uh, you, you need to complete the task very fast, you know, within a few seconds, yeah. you know, within a minute or something. And so that means that you cannot load historical data. But with the batch jobs, you usually tend to have a lot of historical data to joins and mm -hmm. for longer times. So, yeah. so maybe this is a case is a special case as it doesn't apply in general, I assume. Um, I think I think this is a special case. Uh, people can do the flink from from Kafka to load the streaming data and uh, to load the Hadoop uh, to the Hadoop, and uh, then uh, in Hadoop we can do the batch batch uh, batch job like before. Uh, but uh, uh, Flink can only do we call the uh, the detail layer, and then if you you want to do the summarize or you want to build your your own index layer, uh, you have to use the the, the traditional data warehouse like a Hadoop or Terminator or, or other things, uh, because is I think is not not the same and uh, it's not very. Uh, I think uh, it's not very very, very uh, it's not very very easy to build a real time data warehouse. It's very very it's not easy because data warehouse is not only to 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 to, to, to deal with the data from one place to the other but data warehouse have many data models so i think it's very hard to do it uh, like a real-time data warehouse <laughs> so in terms of a maintainability like for example if you built a i, I like for example uh, to set up just as two comparison to set up a joy and you have a, like a seven or six or seven or i forgot the exact number but uh, but it used to be I mean, it's several of these services that you be be running and then you had to, if you run the, uh, Amazon, you had this, uh, you know, EMR cluster. If you run Hadoop, and you had to do, you know, there's a quite a bit of uh, services you have to run to to do this OLAP databases. For Clubhouse, how easy to maintain to support? Mm, well, for Clubhouse, you you can deploy uh, it on ECS. Uh, we call it ECS, yeah, ECS server, and. Uh, uh, then you can load the data to the clearhouse and uh, you use a SQL to insert and uh, to query uh, and it uh, you, you can use EMR to load the data to the clearhouse because the clearhouse have a GDBC and uh, you can just load it like just like a half and uh, uh, then then you can use uh, uh, the query like a uh, like a uh, bicycle or other other things so I think it's easy to to use uh, uh, but if you have uh, many, many clusters, such like, like uh, you have uh, uh, more than 100 or 200 cluster, uh, cl clearhouse uh, cluster, uh, I think you have to hire one people uh, to do the DBA things for clearhouse. I see. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I, I probably will ask one like, last question. I will just to see the audience and see has anybody has anything. Uh, uh, we, you're, I know in this particular case, you focus on the data ops and you know, see the, the data related. Uh, what's the, you know, I'm asking this off the topic here. So it's a, what do you see the trend in the machine learning platforms? The ML ops, in a sense. Like mm, ML ops. Yeah. ML ops is, uh, I think it will be popular uh, because uh, one thing is we, we more, we use, uh, 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 AI and uh, machine learning uh, more and more uh, popular, and uh, but there is no good platform for ML, MLOps. And if we do it very well, we can uh, use we can uh, use better performance and a lower cost for MLOps. I think MLOps will be will be uh, a good direction, uh, just like uh, data ops. But I think uh, data ops will be more, the first, <laughs> uh, more uh, the uh, earlier than the ML ops because the data ops uh, is popular, then ML ops will be popular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get the data first. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, audience, uh, if you, members, uh, if you have any questions, uh, post it. Uh, you know, this is a chance or your. Oh, somebody, somebody posed a question. Uh, Nick from Canada said, how difficult is to deploy Dolphin 
DAG of the task on Kubernetes um, uh -huh. platform. Do off-the-shelf uh, Helm operators for Delphin exist? Which are the hmm. options for elastic scaling? Uh, well, uh, good question. Uh, now it's very easy to deploy Dolphin DAG task on, on, on KBS, uh, on, on Kubernetes. Uh, but uh, now we uh, we are we are doing the the things to do the uh, elastic search scaling. For example, scale out and scale down, and uh, this is the function we we do it uh, this year. Now we can deploy on, 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 on Kubernetes and uh, you can use a Kubernetes task. But uh, if you want to automatically uh, uh, scale out and scale down, uh, we will do it uh, uh, this year. So uh, is that right? suppose support HA? Uh, not only HA, but uh, we we are uh, distributed uh, oh, yeah, so so you it's not only a multi multi master and a multi worker, so you can uh, spend it quickly and uh, scale down quickly. I see. So uh, the, the other question that the person was asking, uh, that Nikki was asking, that do you have a Helm operator already? And uh, now we do not have that operator, and uh, uh, I, I, we will support that in the in this year, I think, because we have. Uh, a plan to support uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, deeply in this year. We have a we have a, that that plan. Okay, cool. Uh, Dimitri from Russia uh, asking, you know, can you share the link? Uh, the uh, further of slide. So uh, you can uh, you can email me later. I, I can post on the meetup. So. Okay. 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 So any mm. other questions? I think we're about to, we're over an hour already. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> And I have another meeting. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you know way from all the way from China and Beijing, and uh, spend a lot of time with us. Thank you so much. And I will I will share the uh, recording uh, once we got it into YouTube. Okay. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank